everyone uh, with B'nai Vale. My name is Nathan and my name is Abby. From Miami Beach, we wish you a Shabbat Shalom with peace and happiness. From our home to yours, Shabbat Shalom. Hi, we're Julia, Matt, and Serena Kazesko. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, Shalom everyone. everyone. Hi, I'm Ella. This is my brother, Mark, my mom, Jennifer, and my dad, Jean Michel. And we're the Dre family from Vail, Colorado. And, and we hope that everyone is doing, doing well. This is Ronnie Kik. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to our very special B'nai Vail congregation. We're so blessed to have each other especially virtually during this challenging time. But I miss you all so much and looking forward to all of our hugs together. L'chaim, stay safe, be healthy. Shabbat Shalom from Maya and Barbara Behrendt. Hi from the Hodes family in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Shabbat Shalom. How are you? Rabbi Newman and all the congregation of Bnei Vail. I wanted to wish you a big Shabbat Shalom. This is Itzi Cohen, a.k.a. Captain Ayub from Fauda. After all this um, mayhem be over, you are more than invited to visit us in Israel for a big congregation hug. Thank you and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I'm Sharon Kushner, President of B'nai Vale. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Susie and Ellie from Morrisville, North Carolina. Shabbat Shalom. Hi, I'm Olivia, and this is my friend Rio. Hi, I'm Luca. Hola, I'm Freddy. Hi, I'm Nate, and we're wishing you a good Shabbos and good health from Edwards, Colorado. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Hi, I'm Frank Goldman, President of B'nai B'rith, Colorado. Hi, I'm Margo Rockland Goldman, JCRC Representative for B'nai B'rith, Colorado. Thank you, B'nai Vale, for bringing these lovely services to us as we shelter in place in our homes. Shabbat Shalom from our home in Denver to yours. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Havana Shira. Shir Hallelujah. Havana Shira. Shir Hallelujah.
Good evening, Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to our B'nai Veil Shabbat service. Your security is always a high priority. We're working with the Veil Police, Eagle County Sheriff's Office, and Secure Communities Network to formulate what we'd like to think is a strong plan for both indoor and outdoor services. We plan to offer several trainings, both in the chapel and by Zoom, to better prepare you in case of an emergency situation. Our next book is by Mitch Album. It's called Stranger in a Lifeboat. What would happen if we cried out to God for help and someone claiming to be God actually appeared before it? It's a pretty amazing book. It's written in a very, very interesting way. Please join us as we meet by Zoom on February 22nd to discuss your answers and see the newsletter for details. Well, we hope you and your families are healthy and will be able to join us for an exciting summer ahead. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Please join me lighting candles in your home as I light candles in mine and Kanta Michelle leads us in the bracha. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav V'tzivanu lehadlik ner lehadlik ner Shel Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat has come with its embrace of peace, with healing and hope. Bless us as we worship together. Help us to share this Shabbat in love. We thank you, O God, for the strength to work. We thank you also for the gift of rest. May this Shabbat bring us liberation from care and worry, from anxiety and fear. May it break the chains that enslave us, keeping us in bondage to unworthy habits. May this Shabbat help us to free ourselves from petty thoughts, harsh words, and mean acts. May it inspire us to work for the liberation of all from poverty and ignorance, violence and hatred. And may the spirit of Shabbat give us peace. We continue now with the singing of Shalom Aleichem, Peace Be Unto You. The poem was written by the Kabbalists, Jewish mystics of Svat in the late 16th century. According to the Talmud, the song signals the arrival of Shabbat, welcoming angels who accompany a person home on the eve of the Sabbath. As we continue, Shalom Aleichem.
arriving in Jerusalem, the pilgrims lifted their eyes to the mountains and cried out in unison, From where does my help come? With a singular voice they answered, My help comes from God, maker of heaven and earth. This Shabbat, as we lift our eyes to the beauty of our mountains, we welcome the Shabbat with its embrace of peace. We ask your blessings upon all of us as we worship together. We are grateful and appreciative for this moment of rest. 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 Moment of rest. Your gift to us called Shabbat comes weekly to remind us to free ourselves from those things in life that hold us back. Now, 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 now is the time, time to set aside heavy arguments, to say to our family and friends, I'm sorry for things best forgotten. May we never take for granted the beauty of our Rocky Mountains. Take a breath and pause as we lift our eyes and know that each Shabbat we are blessed with peace. Psalm 92 is entitled, A Psalm or A Song for the Sabbath Day. It was first recited in the temple in Jerusalem on Shabbat. Jewish tradition says that it's a psalm of praise and thanksgiving. And according to a midrash, where the rabbis discuss matters that are not found in the Bible, Psalm 92 was said by Adam, who was created on the sixth day, on Friday, at the onset of Shabbat. Well, please join with Cantor Michelle, Sadi Katana.
medieval rabbi, Leon Modena, explained the meaning behind the Baruch Hu prayer this way. He said, imagine a man in a boat who's pulling himself to shore. If one did not know better, it would appear that he's pulling the shore to himself. But indeed, it is the one in the boat who's being moved because the shore is fixed. So it is with prayer. When we recite the Baruch Hu, we think that when we pray, we're moving God closer to our will. But true prayer does quite the opposite. The Baruch Hu moves us closer to God as the cantor continues with our call to worship, the Baruch Hu. We now continue with the most ancient and important prayer found within Judaism as all of us join together in singing the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Shirat Hayam, the Song of the Sea, contains the poem Micha Mocha, which was sung by the Israelites after their crossing of the Red Sea in safety and celebrates the destruction of the Egyptian army during the crossing as they look forward to arriving into the Promised Land. Well, many consider this prayer to be one of the oldest surviving texts found in the book of Exodus as the cantor continues, Micha Mocha. In the prayer of Hashamru, we recite the biblical command to guard the Sabbath. For in six days the Lord created the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he ceased from his work and rested. The great Zionist thinker Achad Am, the founder of cultural Zionism, saw Israel as a spiritual center, a Jewish state, and not merely a state of Jews. Achad Am said, more than Israel has kept the Sabbath, the Sabbath has kept Israel. As we join in prayer every Friday night, let Shabbat continue to keep us together as a family. Then we continue with the cantor of the Shamru. <laughs> 
The Birkat HaGomel prayer expresses gratitude for the miracle of healing and the full restoration of one's health to family and friends, and indeed, full restoration to life itself. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, HaGomel Lechayavim Tovot, Sheg Gimalani, Kol Tov. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who bestows kindness upon each of us and has bestowed goodness upon me. May God, who has bestowed kindness upon us, continue to bestow every goodness upon each of us forever. Well, there are those in our community who are in need of healing, body, mind, and spirit. We'll take a moment now as the cantor continues with the singing of Nisha Berach.
Eternal God, we turn to you seeking comfort, faith, and hope. Bless all of those who put themselves at risk to care for the sick. Send strength and courage to the doctors, the nurses, and support staff in the front lines of this battle. Bless the medical scientists and researchers with insight and skill, dedication and fortitude who are working day and night across the world to offer healing treatments and distribute the vaccine quickly. Bless the sacred work of their hands. May this plague pass from among us speedily. Help us, O God, to see that we are one world, one people. And bless especially all those who are in need of healing. Send us health, O God, watch over us, and hear our prayer. Amen. Be not afraid of silence. It is more powerful than the unpolished word. It allows God's voice to be heard. It allows tears and doubt to tumble out. Be there with quiet compassion that flows from the depths of your being, through your eyes, your touch, your sighs into your very soul. Be not afraid of silence as the cantor continues Adonai Svatai. Adonai Svatai Tiftach Ufi Agitei Latecha Adonai Sefatai Tiftach Ufi Agitei Latecha Found in the book of Psalms, Yilu Ratzon Im Refi. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God. Well, this peaceful prayer allows us to focus on God in quiet trust that while today may be a challenge, tomorrow will be a better day as the cantor continues. Yilu Ratzon. Let's take a moment now for a thought and a prayer. When I was repairing some of the 1,564 Czech Holocaust Torahs while a rabbinical student in London, only twice did I come across a Vavim Torah scroll. That's a Torah that when the scribe would write on parchment with a quill, the 304,805 letters of the Torah, he meticulously calculated 
to have as the first letter of each of the 248 columns in the Torah be the letter Vav. The Hebrew letter Vav means and, showing that the entire Torah is connected with no ending. The laws and lessons of the Torah are timeless. Now, when scrolling through the Torah to the book of Exodus, it's easy to spot the Ten Commandments because of the manner in which they are always written. We read in the text how they were inscribed on two tablets. The first tablet presents the laws of relationship between mankind and God. The second tablet, well, it carries the laws of the relationship within mankind. Now, as we continue to read through the Torah beyond the Ten Commandments, we realize that there's two classes of Jewish law. There are the chukim, the I told you so laws, like kosher laws, laws from God that, well, they don't always in an obvious way seem to have a practical purpose. And then there are the mishpatim, laws that seem to be logical and practical. It makes sense. Since you can't have an orderly society when people are going around killing each other, you can't do business if everyone is lying to everyone else and no one's word can be trusted. You can't have an orderly life if every time you turn your back, somebody is stealing from you. Well, in my Talmud class in rabbinical school, my professor, he just seemed to enjoy taking one simple law and making the class discussion last an hour or more. So join me in class, follow along with my Talmud class experience of many years ago. Thou shalt not steal, the professor shouted. He went on, you see, when studying this simple law, we always include if a man digs a pit in his yard, and then all the protective laws that go with that, or if a man steals an ox or a sheep and he kills it, how is that law handled? Well, those laws are pretty cut and dry. These are the logical and the practical laws. Now, because I'm sitting by a window at the seminary and next to it is a screeching subway line that is outside my window on 122nd Street and Broadway, I'm easily reminded that most of us but well, we don't live in an agricultural society. So just as us city folk are trying to understand those continuous laws from 2000 years ago, my professor asked us to open our Talmud to tractate Baba Metziah for a story he said, it will make it all clear. So join me in class as we read this lesson from the Talmud. Rabbi Chaninya ben Dosa found a chicken wandering in his yard. The problem was that Rabbi ben Dosa, well, he didn't raise chickens. Now the law in the Torah says that if you see an ox of your enemy or his donkey wandering around loose, you shall return it to him repeatedly. The commentary chimes in saying, the requirement for all property, not just animals, must be returned and you must care for it and protect it until your brother returns for it. Well, Rabbi Bendosa, he had no idea whose chicken it was. And I could see my professor was really enjoying this as the Talmud continues. Well, Bendosa asked around if anyone had lost a chicken. There was no response. He brought the chicken into town and he said, who belongs to this chicken? Still no answer but the Torah said that he had to hold onto it and protect it until the owner would show up. So Ben Dosa, well, he took it home. It turned out that this particular chicken was fertile. And one day the chicken laid some eggs. Ben Dosa let the chicken with her eggs sit. And since they weren't really his, and a while later they hatched. Well, those chicks grew and bred and laid more eggs, and before you know it, his whole yard was full of chickens. But Bendosa never slaughtered them or harvested the eggs because they weren't his. They belonged to the owner of the original chicken. 
One day he was completely overrun with chickens, so he sold them and bought goats. Since goats are worth far more monetarily than the chickens, the owner should have no complaint should the owner ever show up. Well, as you can guess, the goats got together and they made more goats. But Rabbi Bendosa, he didn't do anything with the goats because they weren't really his. But he was by halacha, by law, he was required to take care of them. So before long, his yard was overrun with goats. So he sold those and he bought horses. Soon he had a fine herd of horses and just as he was about to despair, what am I gonna do with all of them? A stranger wandered into his gate and said, excuse me, fella, have you seen a chicken running loose around here? Brown with a red crop. She's a nasty little thing. She got away from me some time ago and search as I might, I haven't been able to find her. Well, the story in the Talmud continues. Rabbi Bendosa turned to the man and said, well, if that was your chicken, then this is your fine herd of horses. They're all yours. But I lost a chicken, said the man. And Rabbi Bendosa explained what happened, quoted the halacha, the Jewish law. And instead of a fugitive chicken, he had a fine herd of horses worth many more times than the chicken. Well, making a long story short, the two men thanked God for the reward of following the halacha, God's laws, and the chicken man picked out the best horse, gave it to Bendosa as thanks, and that's where the lesson on stealing in the Talmud ended. Well, some of the students concluded saying, oh, such is the continuous wisdom of God's commandments for all generations, laws like thou shalt not steal, these laws are timeless. So together with the other students, I'd go down to Chock Full of Nuts Coffee Shop and we'd discuss the essence of the lesson. And while these laws would seem to be logical and somewhat practical, what was the, the spiritual component, the role of God in these laws? Because that's as important as the law itself. Now, I've never worked on a farm or raised chickens, but the lesson in the Talmud, it still made sense. A simple law like, thou shalt not steal, when you delve into it meant in the third century and today, it brings out a quality of human kindness. Human kindness with a dash of spirituality of laws. Since the law was given to us by God saying, you may not understand the law initially, but when you find a chicken running through your yard, be aware. Be aware of the consequences of the law given by God. La'asot et ha'davar ha'nachon. Do the right thing, because God is always watching over you. Amen. At this moment in memory of our loved ones who are no longer with us, we join hands in love and remembrance. A link has been broken in the chain that bound us together, yet strong bonds of home and love hold us one to another. Though our loved ones are beyond our sight, we do not despair because we'll always be comforted by precious memories. Please join with me in the Mourner's Kaddish. Yitzkadal v'yitzkadash shemei rava v'yalma divrach hivutei v'yam lit malchutei v'chayei chon v'yomei chon v'chayei d'chal beit Yisrael Aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'mramein Ose shalom v'mramav Huya se shalom Aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'mramein The prayer Adon Alam was written in the 11th century by the great Spanish Jewish poet and philosopher Solomon ibn Gabro. 
Adon Olam combines the poetic beauty and simplicity and charm of our language. Our prayer concludes, I place my soul within God's palm before I sleep and when I wake. And though my body I forsake, I rest in the Lord in fearless calm. As the cantor continues, Adon Olam. Adon Olam, Asher Malach, Eterem Ko Yitzir Nivra, Eit Nasa, Vechef Soko, Azai Melech Shemo Nika Adon Olam, Ve'achare Kichlot Hako, Levado Yimloch Nora Adon Olam, Ve'hu Haya, Ve'hu Hove, Ve'hu As the sun sets on this Shabbat, I'd like to offer a closing prayer for all of you. Adonai Oz Liamo Yitain, Adonai Varech Atamo Shalom. May the Lord grant strength unto his people, bless all peoples with peace, health, and happiness. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining us this week. Please join us together with Cantor Michelle as we do Kiddush and Motzi. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Bore puri ha'gafen. See our breath. <sighs> but the challah is still warm. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz b'tei avon. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.